Hello everyone and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of the Snowflake Data Cloud Summit in San Francisco at the Moscone Center. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, and I'm sitting alongside my co-host and co-analyst, Dave Vellante. So Dave, in this next segment, we're going to be talking to a company that's taking some big swings. Right down the <laughs> middle, harnessing Rebecca. Harnessing <laughs> Right data. down the middle. <laughs> harnessing the power of data, indeed. You, you a big golfer? Not a big golfer, but I, I try. try. You yeah. try, you try. Well, so I'd like to introduce our next two guests. We have David Demitz. He is the Global Business Intelligence Team Lead at TaylorMade Golf. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. And RJ Tracy, SVP of Partners, Strategic Development and Channel at Domo. Thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. Thanks for having me. So, I want to start with you, RJ. Why don't you just tell our viewers a little bit about, about Domo, what you do. Yeah, so Domo really has a pretty broad platform and we wrap around Snowflake. So we start with an integration layer. We have over a thousand pre-built connectors that help people get data. Even a business user can get data directly from a system right into Snowflake without having to code anything. Um, we also have a full ETL layer that allows you to prepare your data, clean, uh, clean the data, build pipelines without having to move the data out of Snowflake. And then on the other side, we have a full visual layer and a low code, no code app platform, and all of that's wrapped around an AI service layer that allows us to leverage all the really innovative things that Snowflake's doing with AI and serve it out to the, to the end business user. Okay, and so these guys are your BI interface? Yeah, or? so we've been with Domo for probably going on eight years or so now, and so um, we implemented them as our primary BI platform and at the time, they were our primary kind of data warehouse too in the cloud. Okay, and how did you get started with them? What was the impetus and what's, that, what's the journey been like? So yeah, the impetus was kind of what RJ was mentioning, you know, to have a really kind of tightly integrated but easy to implement and manage BI platform. Um, at TaylorMade Golf, you know, we're, I like to say we're a big brand, we have a big name, but our reality is much smaller than that. We're a pretty small company, my team is pretty small, so we needed something that was easy to work with, easy to implement, easy to manage, without a big team, because we just didn't have those type of resources to, to So hence the appeal of Domo, and obviously Snowflake would, would be appealing as well, but all in one, you don't need, it's not a science project. Correct, exactly. Okay, so can you paint a picture of how you guys your, your sort of tech stack that you're responsible for, how you add value to the business. Yeah, so at TaylorMade, my team is responsible for all things BI and analytics, and so okay. that's for manufacturing, that's for finance, that's for marketing, just about everything that we do comes through my team. And so because of that, we have to make data assets available to everyone in the most easy to use way possible. And so, you know, one of our main issues or, or challenges was finding all these kind of data silos that were throughout the organization and being able to put them into one place so that people could then take those different data assets and those data sets and, and kind of play them against each other in different ways that they weren't able to do previously when they were more siloed. Common problems that you're hearing from customers? Is this yeah, a access, typical situation? Access to data is a really common problem. Integrating data into Snowflake or you know, other data warehouses is a really common problem. And, and really helping the line of business self-serve in a governed way that allows them to have access to data but also control outcomes at the end of the day. So what's the process that you go through? You mentioned a number of constituents that you serve. When you go to, to, to serve those constituents and building dashboards and What's that data pipeline look like? What's that process? How painful is it? And how has it evolved to be so less you, painful? Yeah, so basically we go and look for these, these use cases where people are maybe doing the same thing over and over again, and usually starting in spreadsheets like we all know, and I find out, oh yeah, I have to create this data set or this presentation or whatever it is. I've got to do this like once a week or once a month or something like that and it's instantly out of date. And so we look for those opportunities to say, okay, well how can we automate this? How can we create a data pipeline that services this need so that you don't have to do that anymore? We don't want people to spend all their time creating the content. We want them to spend it analyzing the content, presenting the content, doing work on it. So those, that's usually our process is to go do those type of interviews and find those, those situations and a lot of times people just don't know that there's a better way. They just kind of think this is my lot in life, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. And we come and say, no, let's, let's automate this stuff, let's get these things going in, let's do all the logic in the ETL tools and let's present these in a dashboard that now you never have to touch again, it's always up to date, you never have to do it like mid-month or anything like that, and that's where we get a lot of value for our customers. So imagining for that person that you're telling there's this better way and 
voila, here it is, that, that, that feels pretty magical. What are some of the measures of success? That, that how, how are you looking at what you're producing and, and determining the ROI on it? Really it's about like how many users we have in Domo uh, consuming content, creating content. That's another thing with our the way that we're org organized. We don't have a lot of developers within IT to create content. We enable the, our customers, you know, the people in the department, the business analysts, to do a lot of their own development. And that way they can kind of be masters of their own area. They can you know, create what they need to. A lot of times they'll get into trouble and they'll need our help and we kind of consider ourselves consultants in that way. But you know, by just kind of seeing, well, what departments do we have our penetration in to, um, to try to automate these things and, and make their lives easier? There's still a couple of departments that we've still yet to crack and we're, those are on our list. But yeah, we've made a lot of good inroads there. We had a, um, another customer on earlier and he was saying that, he was describing his data pipeline and the challenges and the pain. He said, he predicted that based upon you know, the AI wave and some of the things that he saw announced today and this week, that 30 to 40% of his uh, process is going to be disrupted in a good way. Uh, do, you, do you feel this, the same way, that, that there's that much potential for improvement? Yeah, for sure, and I think one of the main things that we're going to be working on in order to enable that is, is continuing to collect data assets into a centralized location. Up until recently, that's been in Domo, but now with this kind of new um, partnership and, and integration with Snowflake, we see that's where our, we're going to build the data lake, get all those data assets in one place, because really in order to to create AI applications and things like that, you need all the data to be in one place, right? Right now we're still kind of pulling data from various locations and trying to get it in that one place, but I definitely see that's going to be the future, is once we get all that data there, then I think you know, the sky's the limit as far as those type of use cases. I wonder if you could comment on this, right? Because it's like a pendulum, right? Hey, put it all into one place, it'd be EDW, and then you know, all of a sudden, data marts start popping up all over the place, and, and, and you know, Hadoop, okay, let's bring it all back in, and then the cloud, and it's all over. So, where do, where do you see the trend going in terms of what David was just saying? It, it seems like people are saying, look, we got to get our data estate in order, in order to take advantage of AI. So, uncle, we'll put it all in one place. <laughs> what are you seeing in the customer base? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a challenge for all customers trying to get all their data into a single location. You know, we definitely um, support Snowflake's initiative to keep your data in Snowflake, make sure that, that the data stays there, that you can trust the data, that it's cleansed. Um, I think you see a lot of data marts in the industry pop up in different departments because there's business units that don't have a way to get data into Snowflake, so they try to park it anywhere they can to get access to that data. And I think Domo, you know, our solution to that is make integration easier, make ETL easier, give access out to different departments so they can self-serve data in a governed way so that they can control outcomes in their line of business and build data solutions on top of the Snowflake platform. So how would you describe your AI strategy, David? Well, we're still very early on into it, so we're looking for those use cases, maybe some of those quick wins of things that we can do with, whether it's customer service related, that's kind of one of our early ones, is try to see how we can mine our customer service data that it's available to the representatives as they're talking to customers that can get them information um, easier and faster. So just trying to find some of those quick wins that you know, will give us the, the success to then go to do more complicated things. So yeah, we're, we're going to try to just start slow and get those quick wins and then just build from there. Is that, what's the pay for there? Is it incremental? budget or is it stealing from other budgets? And if so, which budgets are you stealing from? I think it is really incremental. I think as we go forward, that's one thing, we've got a really supportive executive team at TaylorMade that is really forward looking when it comes to technology. So as long as we can show those quick wins and show the, the, you know, the benefit that we're seeing, then when it comes to finding the budget and things like that, we're always getting a lot of support with those type of things. They definitely see that that's the wave of the future. We don't want to be left behind. And so, but you know, it's really key to have those, those successes early just so that we can then build on that going so forward. So as a practitioner that has to stick his neck out, um, you're, you're, you're okay hitting some singles. For sure. As opposed to trying to, try to hit the grand oh, absolutely, slam. Absolutely, absolutely, right? yeah. So low risk, and then sort of build up to those larger initiatives. What are some of the, the, the quick hits that you're seeing potential uh, on and 
maybe longer term, what are some of those, those big in ones? In the AI space? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, I think like the, like I, when I was mentioning in customer service, we have like a lot of documents and things that our reps have to refer to to get information to their customers about. It's like, oh, well, what, is the, what are the sh shaft possibilities on this one particular driver? Or, you know, what are the different um, ball offerings for, and, and what are the programs that are available? Those are things that previously they'd have to kind of go and fish through a bunch of, you know, PDF documents and things like that. Um, we're creating a chatbot on, on top of a lot of those documents now that will go and be able to read those so they can just ask the question, hey, what is this? Bring it up and they can kind of communicate that to the customer. Um, keeping that internal for now, just again, so we can make sure that as those answers come back, they're accurate and they're what we need. But it does definitely save a lot of time on that customer service rep's uh, point of view to kind of make that happen. And with those big aspirational, you know, uh, bigger ROI, I'm not really using the term right, but bigger NPV mm -hmm. to be more technical. Uh, the bigger wins, if you will. Are they things like allowing business users to do what ifs on their own uh, and have the confidence of doing that or what kinds of things might yeah, we Yeah, for expect? sure, especially when it comes to analytics. I know that's an area that Domo's been working on and some of the new um, features that we heard at their conference a few months ago about allowing, as opposed to creating content and you know, building dashboards, you can ask Domo through their platform questions and it'll build something for you. It'll answer the question for you. So that's definitely one of the bigger ones as well that we haven't even really kind of scratched the surface with. There's definitely things like that. So beyond that, RJ, talk about your approach to AI and, and how you, you view the, its, its scale. Yeah, so we, we have an AI service layer as part of our product. And what's great about it is, you know, you heard a lot of announcements over the last couple of days from Snowflake and being able to fully manage an LLM in Cortex. And we've taken that same approach that allows customers to have their uh, LLMs fully managed by Snowflake. And then the AI service layer is throughout our entire product, which means you can do text to SQL, you can ask questions to your data and get narratives back as well as charts and visuals back. It also will auto-generate an entire dashboard for an end user. So if you have a data set and you've got users that are exploring data or maybe it's the first time they've brought data into Snowflake, we actually can build them up a comprehensive dashboard around that data using their own fully managed LLM model hosted in Cortex. So we're, we're definitely excited about the announcements that have come out and, and we're fully embracing the AI landscape. So speaking of that, you're both presenting here tomorrow. Can we you talk a little bit yourself. about what you're, going to be, what you're going to be saying in your minutes. presentation and, and give us a sneak peek? Sure. So yeah, we're, um, the presentation we're doing tomorrow is actually kind of an interesting one because I mentioned the um, the uh, uh, Domo conference that went to a couple months ago, one of the um, new features that they announced there, I remember when they talked about it, I looked to my colleague and I was like, oh wow, this is huge, this is going to be big for us. And it was this thing called Cloud Amplifier. And basically it was the, it's their answer to how sometimes it's difficult to get data into Snowflake. Like I said, we're a smaller kind of organization. We have an integration team, but a lot of times they don't have the bandwidth for all the projects that we have. So if we can take things into our own hands to get data out of you know, the source systems into Snowflake, then that can be a game changer for us to be a lot more agile. And so the use case that we're, that we're talking about tomorrow is literally from when we heard that three months ago, we started a POC with Domo and we completed it within just essentially a month. To, to do this and it's around our golf ball manufacturing supply chain. And it was just amazing to me that literally three months ago, I was like, I'd never heard of this before. I thought it was going to be great. And now tomorrow we're going to be talking about the results of this. Three months POC. ago, mm -hmm. wow. That's awesome. Wow. I also want to go back to something you were talking about that, that you don't want employees creating the data. You want them looking at the data, analyzing the data, making decisions based on what they're seeing. And since you're already starting to empower employees to be able to do that, what has been the reaction that you're hearing from them in terms of how they do their jobs and how it's changing how they get work done on behalf of the organization, but, but also for their own life satisfaction and, and job satisfaction? Yeah, it, it, it can be a little tricky for them sometimes though because that, sometimes that's how they see their role. It's like, this is what I do. And you're saying, well, I'm going to take that away from you. And then they go, well, what is my role then? But then we say, look, no, you're here to be a business analyst. You're better than this. You can do more. And so once we get them to kind of see that change, then yeah, there's a whole lot more just kind of energy around what they can provide and how they can show their worth to their department as opposed to, hey, I just generate this, this document and send it out every Monday morning, that type of thing. 
Excellent, well, exciting times. RJ, David, thank you both so much for coming on theCUBE. Sure. Thanks thank for you. having us. Thanks, you guys. Thanks. I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of the Snowflake Data Cloud Summit. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.